Hey, g'day guys, Calvin from the Car Tune Company in New Zealand. I've done a series of videos on the wiring of this 47 Ford. For those of you who haven't seen it, we'll just do a real quick brief. Uh, but we're going to talk about the, the AIM dash today. Before we do that, let's have a look. So under here we've got the factory ECU. We've got a link ECU controlling the engine. This is doing the uh, transmission. It's got the proper 5-speed A650 in it. PDM, we've got a video on the PDM, the Power Distribution Module by Motec. That's all tucked under the seat. It was a bit of a job making an engine loom that runs up to the big firewall grommets. Now of course this vehicle isn't finished, so but it is a, a work in progress. It's airbagged in the back, custom fuel tank. Under the hood, we have a 1UZ VVTi. BBT Lexus with the red loom. That's looking quite snug and lovely in that hole. Pop that back down again. Suspension at the front, big custom radiator, extra oil cooler for the trans. And over here, we have an AIM dash. And that is what we're going to talk about today. So, why? Why are you an AIM dash? So I've got a, another couple of vehicles to do with an AIM dash. I've got a 2011 Hilux, getting a 2JZ, and I'll do a video on that when we get to it. And I did a Prado with it. And we also run some AIM dashes in the sprint boats. And that was my first experience with them. And the first one was an old one, old, old, old. I think Noah got it out of the ark, it was that old, but I managed to persevere with it for a couple of years. The race dashes have logging, the road dashes are a display. They don't have the logging features. They still have some really neat stuff. This one's got CAN output. Uh, no, sorry. This one's got a CAN communication. Uh, really cool because they've got the pull-up resistor that you can just turn it on and off. The CAN channel on this one is into the Link ECU. So I don't have extra wires for water temp or um, for the TACO or for speed in this case. It's all through the CAN. And so it's freed up some channels on my Link ECU. And it's got uh, a few manual inputs for the indicators, headlights, high beam. Also got a calibratable fuel gauge. And I had a, that was interesting. We got it there though. It was uh, reasonably straightforward. I've done a few of them now, so it's getting easier and easier. The, I've used the factory sender unit, which was, well, it's a Toyota sender unit. Factory Toyota type sender unit in the tank. Set up all the dash, configured it how I liked it, got the indicators flashing, and you might sound, hey, that's no big deal. In the PDM, I set the flashes to flash uh, at the right frequency, but when it was coming up into the dash, it wasn't quite picking up. The, the, the uh, sampling rate wasn't high enough, so I, I upped the sampling rate. So, so the sampling rate for the indicators now is 1,000 hertz. So it's real quick, and it gives a nice flash. So let's have a bit of a look in here. Now it will be a bit flicky, I'm afraid. This thing's uh, airbagged, so you can hear the airbags working. Fire it powers up. So I've got the screen here. And we've got a battery light. So that does excite the alternator correctly. Oil light, and an extra awning oil light. These icons I can change around to suit. No big deal, you know, but having indicators that flash nicely. And that's done, uh, all programmed in. We've got proper readouts, so I can put whatever I want in the readout, so I can configure different screens. And a fuel warning that comes on at 10 litres. You can see it's got actually 30 litres of fuel in this vehicle. All the normal stuff, high beam, low beam. So these are legal in New Zealand, we can use them. Uh, for that you do need an odometer. And we'll just flip through a couple of screens here. Here's our odometer and our chip trip meter. So we've even got that. This one's got gear indicator. So uh, doesn't do a park though. So there's a, that's the reverse. We've got a neutral and there's uh, fifth gear there. There's fifth gear there. Think a little bit more set up on that link computer eye just to get those gear shifters better. And this is our fuel pressure, and we've got oil pressure not on that screen. Here's 
here's our oil pressure. And that's coming from the link as well. So it goes through to the link ECU and then through the CAN channel up into the uh, dash. We'll fire this thing up. And you'll watch that oil pressure come up. Who put it into drive? It won't start in drive. Let's try that again. Oil pressure's come up like it should. So I've set up several different screens, including this one, which has even got the wide band. And that'll settle in the moment. A little bit lean just there as it's firing up, but that'll come down in just a moment. There's another little engine issue that I do have to resolve. The customer, well, the customer will resolve and then we'll sort that. Ignition timing, not that we really need it. Throttle position, fuel pressure, and if it's got fault codes. And it does bring up an engine check light as well. That is in the, oh, this one here in the icons, we've got our engine check light. So let's have a bit of a look in the, uh, in the software. So I've got the laptop, and we'll flick over from the Motec to the uh, AIM. So we're going through Race Studio 2. We might just uh, pop out into the light. So we're using Race Studio 2, here's our dash here. And you can see what's going on, what voltages are coming in, all the ECU channels, different speeds. Uh, this one's actually taking in 40 different channels. And some calculated channels internally. So if we turn on the high beam for example, I think I can do that. Goes to five five volts. So you can see the high the, the high beam is going in like it should. And I can also change around the configuration. Uh, have I got a configuration? Yes I have. We'll just uh, go up here. This one here and we'll open it up. These are the different channels and I can change it around to do different things, accept different sensors, put in a whole lot of different sensors, uh, and calibrate them and make it all work to do it what we want. We lift to different icons. We can check into different icons. And there's a whole list of different icons we can use. So if you've got a four-wheel drive, you can have different four-wheel drive lights, different warning lights, turbo pressures, echoes, whole lot of different uh, icons that can be used and we can also set up some warnings so some different warnings and it will display along the bottom of the dash we can actually have an info line with writing uh, uh, when I'm with the sprint boat I will put uh, things like hurry up with a little word in between um, or let's go racing a bit of motivation to keep the guys moving very, very similar software between the two of them. So, well, so it's the same software between the two of them, but very similar to set up. And once you get your head around it again, same deal. There's a couple of little tricks that just uh, knowing to switch between uh, the live data, which is here, and the configurations, which is up here. Once you got that sorted, hey, they're a really great little product. So the downsides of a, of a dash such as this, I don't actually see a, a, a lot. Uh, sometimes the shape not fitting in. This one looks actually pretty good. He's made a console behind it. It fits in really well. Some guys might not be happy with the 5 inches. I believe there is a 7 inch available. But some of us are pretty happy with 5 inches because we know what we're doing. So if you're looking at building a hot rod, or road car, race car, drift car, uh, it's always, I think it's a really good option to consider some of these aftermarket dashes of what's out there. Uh, the particular AIM dash, they do have a Wi-Fi option. Uh, and at some tracks, we can't get communication. It's really interesting because I do get called from the Sprint Boat guys and they say, hey, can you look at our dash? And I'm like, yeah, get your cable out because there's interference. So I always prefer the ones with a cable. But apart from that, hey, they're a great bit of kit. If you're racing and you want some logging functions on maybe your carburetor vehicle, 
then you've got that. Or if you're going up to the ECU control stuff, you've got the CAN bus to put your data on the screen, whether to log it or just as a display. So great option. And I hope that's been helpful, just letting people know what's out there and what can be done. And uh, we'll talk to you again. Catch you later.